Kinesiology 3500, Drugs and Athletics. In this lecture, we're going to be covering beta blockers, depressants, and the all-important athlete biological passport. Please note that you're going to be having a quiz on the athlete biological passport. The best way to prepare for that is to look through the World Anti-Doping Agency website, the United States Anti-Doping Agency website, there's also a Prezi presentation on the Athlete Biological Passport under Documents and Content in Blackboard. Beta blockers were first synthesized in the pharmaceutical injury in industry in 1958. These are drugs that are used for supporting a wide range of clinical conditions including hypertension and heart cardiovascular diseases. Beta blockers antagonize the beta receptors that involve noradrenaline and adrenaline. Both noradrenaline and adrenaline act through these receptor sites known as adrenoceptors. There are two major classes of adrenoceptors, alpha and beta, and beta is subclassified into three types of beta 1, 2, and 3. This is covered extensively in chapter 18 of the sixth edition of Drugs and Sport by Motram. Beta blockers have been modified to be very specific in their targets and to reduce unwanted side effects. In the heart, the beta-1 receptors decrease your heart rate and the force of the heart beat. The respiratory system, the beta-2 receptors cause bronchoconstriction and skeletal muscle beta-2 receptors reduce tremor. This is covered in Table 18.1 and page 218 of our Drugs and Sports 6th edition. By the way, there are two two-hour um, reference copies available for checkout at the Stanislaus State Circulation Desk of the library. The action of beta blockers include um, reducing the heart rate and the force of the heartbeat. Um, it also is used with patients who have hypertension or high blood pressure by reducing the blood pressure. It's been effective in, in preventing secondary heart, heart attacks in patients who have had a myocardial infarction or heart attack in the past. This diagram shows the mechanism of action when you're taking oral medication beta blockers to short circuit, to, uh, to short circuit stress in your life. Uh, beta blockers uh, enter your bloodstream through the gastrointestinal tract. Please note that every medication you take orally does have to pass through your stomach and liver and gets filtered in the process. Beta blockers then prevent adrenaline from attaching to the receptors on the heart cells and then the heart rate stays normal during fight or flight reactions. Beta blockers are used therapeutically in situations with migraines or intraocular pressure with glaucoma and anxiety is also treated with beta blockers as it can decrease the heart rate and reduce hand tremors. Common um, side effects can include fatigue, coldness in the extremities, sleep disturbances, and decreased erections in males. Some of the contraindications for beta blockers, asthmatic patients who are taking beta blockers are especially contraindicated because they block the beta receptors in the respiratory tract, leading to bronchoconstriction and can cause problems in, in breathing. Beta blockers, again, are contraindicated when you do have a history of asthma or another, situa another condition where breathing is compromised, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD. Used in sports, beta blockers were added to the International Olympic Committee prohibited list in 1985. You may be asking yourself, what athlete would use beta blockers? Well, for most sports, it's used in competition, and it's very common in high accuracy sports such as archery and shooting, where tremors can be um, a detriment to your performance. And also used where anxiety, uh, athletes that are uh, dealing with anxiety during competition and are trying to reduce that effect on their performance. Now we move on to the athlete biological passport 
it is based on the stability of the athlete's physiology. Again, an athlete biological passport is information on the athlete that's not looking specifically for the presence of banned substances in your blood or your urine. It identifies markers that may be suspicious or a, or a recent spike or decrease in any um, level of the athlete's blood or urine levels. In terms of blood profiling in the athlete biological, biological passport includes the hematocrit levels, hemoglobin, red blood cell count, reticulocyte, the percentage of reticulocytes, which are um, on the uh, genesis of, of red blood cells, mean corpuscular volume, mean corpuscular hemoglobin, and mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration, and your off-hour score, which is the index of stimulation of blood profile scores. One of the, one of the modules includes your steroid module. Specific markers in an athlete would be their testosterone levels, their epitestosterone levels, and the testosterone to epitestosterone ratio, which if it is above four to one, is considered suspicious marker and would be grounds for um, further testing. Androsterone and eticolone are also included specific markers in the steroid module. Athletes are also tested using what is called the hematological module, having to do with blood. Um, specific markers include the hematocrit, hemo, hemoglobin, red blood cell count, again, reticulocytes, immature reticulocyte fraction, and mean red cell distribution width. The athlete's information is stored through what is called the Anti-Doping Administration and Management System, also known as ADAMS. It orders tests that are part of the athlete biological passport and stores the information for up to eight years. The athlete's whereabouts are maintained Every athlete who is subject to testing through the athlete biological passport has to account for their whereabouts so they can be tested for um, unannounced. Um, if they are not available for testing, it is considered grounds for a positive test and can be subject to sanctions. The therapeutic use exemption certificates are also stored through ADAMS. Therapeutic use exemptions are for athletes who have a legitimate medical purpose for a certain drug. For instance, if they are on, on asthmatic medications, they have a use exemption for being on a banned substance for a legitimate medical purpose. Athletes' whereabouts are entered online and they can review their information by entering their code. And anti-doping or organizations can be granted permission by the athlete to view information on the ADAMS system. So this next video may not be able to be watched um, through this um, program, but do be sure to look at the USADA doping collection process. It's a short video that just shows how the doping control officers are able to um, visit the athlete at a moment's notice, um, unannounced or announced, to be able to get information on there uh, and provide a sample for drug testing. So let's review. We'll take a look at some multiple choice and true false questions. Components of the athlete biological passport include all of the following except sanctions, atoms, the hematological module, or the steroid module. And the answer is sanctions. The, the ABP does not enforce any sanctions. That is up to each sports organization governing body to determine what the sanctions are for positive testing. The athlete biological passport attempts to detect the presence of specific banned substances in an athlete's system. And that answer would be false. Let's take a look here. That's right. It's false. It actually is an indirect test. It does not test for specific drugs. And the reason being is that there are many different drugs that the reason being there are many different drugs that uh, may go undetected that are designer steroids and it's important for um, WADA to be able to test for specific, um, to be able to test 
markers that would indicate that an athlete is off from their baseline measurements rather than specific banned substances. Next question, beta blockers are typically presented, prescribed, excuse me, clinically or therapeutically for what type of condition? And that would be for cardiovascular conditions such as hypertension. Beta blockers have reportedly been used and banned in sports that involve agility, strength, high endurance, or accuracy. And the answer would be accuracy, like shooting an archery. Needle exchange programs are an example of the harm reduction approach to drug control. And that would be true. There's two different models of um, drug control, and that would be abstinence or the drug harm reduction approach. And again, that's right. The World Anti-Doping Agency has a testosterone to epitestosterone rating ratio testing limit of four to one. The athlete biological passport directly detects for doping practices, is administered by local law enforcement, tests for the presence of banned substances, or monitors selected biomarkers that over time indirectly reveal the effect of doping. And the answer is the last one, monitors biomarkers that are over time indirectly reveal the effect of doping. Beta blocker side effects include insomnia and irritability. That would be false. Information and data gathered in the athlete biological passport is such as an athlete's whereabouts and test history are stored for up to eight years in a system called their drug sheet, the BioLink, the USOC lab, or Adams. And the answer would be Adams. Adams is the administrative doping and management system that stores athletes' test results for up to eight years. That is true. And just be sure to understand that there are two different um, forms of drug control, the harm reduction method and the abstinence method. Just say no is an example of the abstinence model commonly used in uh, Alcoholics Anonymous or Narcotics Anonymous. Um, harm reduction are things like needle exchange programs or the Budweiser Drink Responsibly program. Thank you, and that concludes this lecture.